Zanans provides a very large sacred space which people use either individually in the silence uh, coming in out of the busyness of the road outside or indeed with great gatherings of uh, hundreds of people. Day by day, with the whole sort of need, I suppose, in our own day to, uh, to contemplate and reflect and think about the things that are happening in the world. St Anne's, again, is useful. People do come here at times of tragedy and times of joy, and it's important that it is open every day for that. we try and make it a welcoming place um, it is inclusive uh, this is Belfast this is a place that we need to have spaces where um, people can come together uh, regardless of their uh, religion or their culture or any other background or uh, sense of uh, division Whilst it's not an old cathedral, in fact we would describe it as a new cathedral, it is still far older than uh, anybody's one lifespan, so nobody can remember it being actually built. That sense in which we're witnessing to something beyond us uh, spatially, but also beyond us in terms of time, is also part of what it creates in terms of its atmosphere uh, of being something bigger than we are. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. Building like this uh, does allow us to reflect more widely on life. You know, we, we come in and it is more than a space. This is a place where people are at prayer every day. And you feel that. And I think that that is important. You know, I think that sacred building, sacred space uh, is, is essential um, in our modern context, where we're living in a, very often in a virtual reality. Um, and here is a place of, of reflection, a place of uh, that we can find silence, we can find stillness. Come in here, and people will often say, 
this is somewhere special. This is a place that I can pray. This is a, a place that I can reflect. I can sit silent. And, um, and so it does have that sense of timelessness. I mean, in 100 years, you could come and do exactly the same thing. 100 years ago, you could have done the same thing. Um, and, uh, and let's hope that one always has buildings like this. There certainly is uh, an age assess about this building, even though it is not old um, uh, compared to you know many many churches in these islands. Um, but it has been built on an old design, a Romanesque um, uh, design, and it it does have that feel of of spaciousness, size, and um, and and beauty. Uh, and I think that uh, these things are badly needed in. in society you often go into buildings there are low ceilings you're under artificial light um, but here you come in here and it, it, it does have a timeless feel to it Some guidebooks suggest that mazes, or labyrinths on cathedral floors, originated in the medieval period as alternatives to pilgrimages to holy sites or shrines. The structure is a tool to facilitate contemplation by directing the mind in a way that allows it to meditate, pray and connect with God through the journey as well as at the centre of our being. The choice of Romanesque meant a return to the style of the primitive church, which found its archetype in the Roman basilica. Note, of course, that the purpose of the building was to enable the gathering of great congregations. Charles Brett, local architectural historian, describes the Romanesque nave of St Anne's as designed by Drew as enormously tall, plain and simple, massive, brooding and impressive. A prominent member of the cathedral board, Judge Thompson, uh, writing in 1930, he says, Here is one of the greatest pieces of constructive work undertaken by the Church of Ireland since disestablishment. It has been planned spaciously and with practical foresight. It has been carried out well, for it has been built to endure for ages. I feel that the cathedral has established itself as the civic cathedral of Belfast and that people can come here in times of crisis, regardless of whether they're members of the Church of Ireland, or indeed of any church. pictorial art. I suppose the, the most obvious example, uh, and probably the only real example of, um, of kind of abstract art is that of the Herdman windows. And they are reflecting again the um, style of the period. Um, abstract art is very much kind of coming into its own in the 70s. But also that period within the church uh, 
was just after the Ecumenical Council, um, and that was also changing attitudes um, across all of the, the churches, um, particularly to do with litur liturgy and how space is understood. Um, so the windows, I think, reflect that. They do seem, I suppose, a bit disjointed when looked, uh, when you see them alongside the other windows. However, I suppose they do fit the architectural uh, feature of the, and the integrity of that space. The cathedral's artwork ranges from about 1887, which is the earliest window, to the construction of the cathedral itself and finishing in 1904. Um, to really uh, the more recent uh, edition in the 1980s uh, and in 2007 when the spire was added. Um, so that it does kind of seem um, there are quite a variety of, of objects and artifacts that, that give that. Um, but they all seem to really um, blend well and work well in symmetry. Um, Quite a, in, quite a difficult task, I think, to have done that. Um, perhaps the the most uh, the easiest feature to kind of give it the size sense of um, transcendence is is the spire of hope. And when you're standing under it, it's in the middle of the sanctuary and looking right up into the heavens. There's so much which I love in this cathedral, but I think the mosaics are just incredible. I and mean, I think that they have been done by just two women. The, the dedication that they put into doing those mosaics are incredible, it's incredible. To many people here in Belfast, the cathedral is an important building. They associated it with ser the services that take place here, which are civic services as well as religious ones, services which involve the whole community. Many people associate it with Black Santa, which of course occurs every Christmas. And we also do have projects which involve the community, such as the choir school scheme. We also, of course, welcome visitors into the community. And we do as much as we can to be available for people who want to come in and talk and receive prayer. The cathedral is also available for healing services, which take place here twice a week, organized by different people. And many people know the cathedral through that and come to it as part of their life. Above all, the cathedral is a church. It is a worshiping community. And unless we have that aspect of daily and weekly worship, we become just a building, just a museum.
I love arches, so I quite like the cathedral here for its arches. Um, and uh, it reminds me of um, a quote by Michelangelo about the definition of an arch, which is two powerful forces that meet at their weakest point to make a stronger whole. And I guess that's kind of, uh, for me, in thinking about um, being a church community, it's that sense of allowing ourselves to be vulnerable, and yet together we're stronger. The church does uh, do an awful lot of work uh, based around the idea of um, reconciliation, um, the relief of need in terms of charity work and supporting uh, the church in other parts of the world. There's that sort of continuity, but in a new context, and I suppose that's what, what the church always has to do, is to understand the, the faith and the tradition that it has received, and then to carry that on in an authentic way. That sense of stewardship, of having received something uh, and then taking care of it to the best of our ability in order that it might continue on into the future and be used by future generations. Having this space available, people just come in and you maybe never get talking to them, you don't know what uh, what's going on in their lives and yet for a quiet moment they, they can sit, reflect, pray, maybe receive a wee bit of help or have a chat and then go on their way. Encountering uh, and talking to, to, to people rather than avoiding them uh, is the way forward and in that sense too you know that kind of reconciliation can continue. We do very much relate to the past but um, very much in the contemporary um, context um, whenever we have any commemoration or celebration from the past we do try to earth it in where we are today um, whether that is um, over a tragedy or whether it's a celebration um, that's always our intention. Our community, our um, society just requires places like St Anne's in order to be able to uh, look at those uh, very deep things of our lives that um, uh, human beings will always need. The one remains, the many change and pass. Heaven's light forever shines, earth's shadows fly. Life, like a dome of many colored glass, stains the white radiance of eternity. <laughs>